Ladies and gentlemen, to the dungeon of the young drums. This is where it all happens, folks. This is the nerve centre. We were actually approached by the Aberdeen International Youth Festival about 18 months ago. And uh, in the beginning, we, did, we just thought it was a really good thing to. It was great that we were asked, but we never ever thought that it would happen. And we thought that it was a good thing to promote the, promote the group. But, uh, Strange thing happened, and we actually you know, we actually ended up getting the final invitation uh, to be Australia's representative at the uh, at the festival. So we thought we'd give it a shot, and uh, since then it's been fundraising, 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 more fundraising. We've been really, we've done really really well overseas. We've been sponsored sponsored by Premier Drums, of Great Britain. We've been sponsored by Savior Symbols of Canada, and again we've been sponsored by um, Minor Percussion in Germany. Having said that, we're having a, a real rough time getting sponsorship here in Australia. Although, I'm going to give you a scoop here, Barry. Today, just this very day, today, this very day, we've got word from Midnight Oil that they are going to put money towards our trip. So we are being sponsored by Australia's greatest ever rock band, Midnight Oil. Yes! Possibility. Um, well, it's been a bit sort of worrying at first. We didn't know whether we were going to make it, but now we know we're there, it's good. Now we can just concentrate on working on the show. And that's what's I'm scared. Which one? What's your name? <laughs> what's your name? Peter. Peter. Why are you scared, Peter? I don't know, it's just a deep feeling of scaredness. So this, this, what this here is, what we call this is an anticipation, okay? And what we've done is we've taken this beat that's normally on one, taken this beat that's normally on one, and we've just moved it forward an eighth note. So instead of going, one, instead of putting the one on one, we actually put the one on the four and. So it's when you see that, when you see that, the accent tied across the bar like that, it's called an anticipated accent. Okay, and we've got a few of them through the piece. I'm just trying to establish how to play it and then we'll put them in their exact places. But right now I just want to get them in a, in a spot so that we can all do it at the same, at, at the same spot. Okay, we'll try that again. Um, the rehearsals are going alright. We're sort of a bit behind, but we're going to catch up and show them how it's done. Woo! Great. <laughs> so, are you looking forward to the trip? Oh, yeah. 
The trip's going to be excellent. I can't wait for the plane and oh, it's just going to be so good. I began drumming when I was nine years old. <laughs> I saw the Young Drum show at the World Masters game and I wanted to join Young Drums then. But I was playing drums before that and I thought it was really, I loved the Young Drums and I just, it's fantastic. So then I went into single lessons with Pete and then here I am now, ready to go to Aberdeen. <laughs> I'm not going to be cranky about it or anything. It's just going to be, if you've done your work, you do all the parts. If you haven't done your work, you'll sit out. Simple as that. Okay?
festival started off in 1969 and it was originally an international youth orchestra festival in Switzerland. The first two years it was held in San Moritz and then it moved to Lausanne. And then the British Tourist Authority suddenly discovered that a British foundation was running something involving a lot of young folk, but in Switzerland. As I say, after about four years in, in Switzerland, um, the, the Briars, Joy and Lionel, they, they came in touch with British Tourist Authority, who just thought, this is crazy, you know, what, what is a British foundation based in London doing, running a, an international arts, youth arts thing in Switzerland? So they made some inquiries, and they said, look, we will find you a new home in the United Kingdom. What exactly do you require in terms of facilities? So obviously, we needed housing um, for, it was a big festival in those days, about 1,500 to 2,000 young people. Wow. This was when people had the money to travel. And so obviously this limited us to university campus situations and cities that would also financially support it and would have a sort of touring outreach area as well. And they undertook research and the shortlist boiled down to Exeter and Nottingham in England and Aberdeen in Scotland. And Aberdeen, contrary to um, the public sort of expectation that Scots are all mean, that was the only city that actually put money on the table and said we'd be prepared to fund this. Um, the university here in Aberdeen is absolutely ideal. It has all the halls and the rooms and everything that we need. It also has a superb concert hall, theatre, smaller chamber music spaces, um, spaces for pure drama groups art galleries, the lot, and it's a, a relatively small city, I and mean, it's only about a quarter of a million population, which meant that with a festival of our size, we would obviously be making a huge impact, which was important for the kids. So it moved to Aberdeen in 1973, and the Briars were a little bit nervous that some groups or some parts of the world had not even heard of Aberdeen. Mm. So for the first four or five years, I think it was, we actually ran it in Aberdeen and London. So the first 10 days were in Aberdeen, and then we put the whole festival on a train, trained them down into London, and used to have a massive weekend of concerts all over London, which was terrific, but in a way, we actually lost the whole kind of ambiance and spirit of what the festival was about. So after a while, we thought, it's too expensive, and why bother? You know, Aberdeen is really our home. And we were getting the kickback from the kids saying that, um, you know, what, why didn't we just finish in Aberdeen? Because it was special there. London is huge, exciting, but, you know, we're just nobody. We make no impact. So um, having made the decision just to um, be based in, in Aberdeen, by this time, the city council were fully on our, our side. We were getting major support from Aberdeen City Council. The oil companies were beginning to come on board with major funding, so the sponsorship side was growing. And our audiences were really, really developing, which is great. And as the years went by, we slowly expanded the program to incorporate dance, drama, um, all, forms of, all forms of music, uh, jazz, world music, and uh, finally theatre. And I took over as director in 1983, and I was very keen to look at the educational element as well. So in that first year I introduced two schools, residential schools, a music school and a dance school. And that opened the doors to individual students coming to study but also being co incorporated into the festival program as well in a performance and workshop situation. <laughs>
And it's my great pleasure to welcome to Haven, the Young John's Percussion Orchestra from Lismore, Australia. The orchestra. Gushing and Deborah got this um, German guy and he comes up, oh, can I have <laughs> So did you think it was going to go well? No, no they, they told us that um, Stonehaven was like a really difficult crowd to impress and they like really loved us. Yeah, they, they, were, like, so, they were like almost better, better than the um, audiences in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Ya ha ido todo a eso. Ya no me gusta la tierra. Hija de mi misma madre.
I also suddenly realised that here in this area there is the Scottish Sculpture Workshop and also Peacock Printmakers. And so we had thereby um, workshop facilities to bring in the visual arts, which we have done over the years when I have the sponsorship. Um, we then developed into projects involving local youngsters with special needs and every other year we run um, theatre performances and within the space of seven days we actually build a performance, that's what it's called, build a performance, and they put on a show. Right. In our first verse, and in the chorus you mix up together, second verse, last chorus. Um, when it comes to that, and all the saxophones play, we can't hear any singing at all from the audience. So you've got to sing much louder, and you've got to play a little bit quieter. Yeah. Um, and then after that, when the last chord's over, there'll be a full company bow. Can, um, oh, I'll go there. Yeah. Could you, could you follow Mark? Have you got a bow? Fine. <laughs> so bow with Mark. Okay, let's just practice that now. As Mark bows, all bow. Pathetic. <laughs> so you can okay, we'll do it twice, please. Twice only, and then the curtains will come in.
So it's expanded in so many different ways, and it's not only based in Aberdeen, it tours all over the northeast now. <laughs>
going to be joined now um, with the Total Aberdeen Youth Choir, um, NASA from Zimbabwe, the Guildhall Saxophone Ensemble, um, and uh, hopefully you as well, you can join in for a rousing finale. Um, this is our version, an improvised version of Swing Low, Sweet Charity Fire. Thank you very much for coming this evening, and it's been a pleasure performing for you. Thank you. Thank you.